Uh, welcome everybody to uh, today's meeting. As you probably noticed from the agenda, there is uh, three different organizations that we're going to be uh, having meetings for. Uh, the first one will be the local authority of Salt Lake City. Um, I uh, will be conducting uh, the, the formal meeting today. Uh, welcome to today. We're happy uh, for those that are here in person uh, or for those that are in, uh, in Zoom uh, uh, or watching uh, the live feeds. Uh, we, begin, we begin tonight's formal meeting, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a little bit of a different of an agenda. Um, we are going to have the local uh, business authority, uh, building authority uh, meeting. Then we're going to have, we're going to move to the, RD, we're going to adjourn that. We're going to go to the uh, redevelopment agency meeting. Uh, all, uh, then we're going to end up and then we're going to go to the uh, formal meeting of, this, of the city council. So bear with us. We're going to be changing hats a little bit as part of the procedure uh, of all of these different uh, entities. Um, we begin now with the Pledge of Allegiance. So please rise. Thank you again for those that are joining us tonight. Uh, we, as we move through the agenda, agenda I want to remind everybody about the rules of decorum which are in place to, uh, to ensure that our meetings move along well uh, and help everybody feel comfortable sharing their comments. Uh, a copy of the full rules of decorum are available at the door um, and our staff have, will be posting those in the Zoom link. Um, our business items tonight include holding public hearings regarding the proposed budgets for the fiscal year 2023-2024 uh, for each entity. Um, as some of you might have noticed, we have switched uh, to, uh, from WebEx to Zoom uh, for the online platform that we use to, re to, to have these hybrid meetings, uh, and that comes with some changes and some learning curve. If you would like to comment uh, on a public hearing today, we are accepting comments in person and online through Zoom. Uh, Isaac Canedo from our staff will moderate our Zoom and will message you with any questions uh, on your registration, about your registration. A staff is handling a lot of tasks uh, and, uh, in the background and helping us uh, keep these meetings uh, smooth. So please limit your messages to technical issues and minimal information updates. If you do need to speak with our staff, please message directly uh, Isaac Canedo uh, fr from the list of participants. If you need to, you can also raise your hand uh, using Zoom. Uh, to indicate that you need something from the host. Um, Taylor Health and our staff will be calling, calling those who wish to comment based on the order that will receive the cards uh, or the, your order of registration. If you are on Zoom, please unmute yourself uh, when Taylor calls your name. Uh, now we are going to go to the uh, item B for the LBA public hearing, um, which is a resolution budget for the capital projects funds of the local building authority for fiscal year 2023-2024. Um, be before we begin comments, I will turn the time to uh, Jennifer Bruno, uh, who is online, uh, joining us today to give us a short introduction. Jennifer. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> the first hearing will address the fiscal year 24 budget for the local building authority. The LBA is the city's financing mechanism to build facilities such as Glendale and Marmalade libraries. This budget is the drop those bonds each year. While the title references capital projects, this does not this budget does not include any of the capital projects that were reviewed and recommended by the mayor and are included in the general fund, CIP capital projects fund. Those projects will be addressed this evening under the general fund, fiscal year 24 general fund budget public hearing. An additional public hearing on the local building authority budget will be held on June 6th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Taylor, please start with our first pub public comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It looks like there is no one registered for this item. Okay. Uh, is there anybody that missed a public comment on this item here present? Okay. It seems like there is not. I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair. I move that the board close the public hearing and refer the public hearing 
refer to the public hearing on June 6, 2023. Second. So I have a motion by Council Member Dugan, uh, or Board Member Dugan, and uh, by uh, Board Member Mano. Any discussion on this item? I see none. Uh, I'm going to call the question. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So this motion passes unanimously. Uh, now we are going to adjourn the uh, local business authority meeting. Uh, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chair, I move that we adjourn as the local uh, business authority and convene as building. Uh, local building authority and convene as the redevelopment agency. A second. second. I have a motion by uh, board member uh, Wharton and a second by board member Mano. Uh, is uh, I'm going to call the question. Any uh, all of those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? This motion passes unanimously. Uh, now we are convened as the redevelopment agency board. Uh, we, as you, you can flip through the agenda, uh, we're going to item D. Uh, the uh, is a resolution, D1 resolution, budget for the re redevelopment agency of Salt Lake City for fiscal year 2023-2024. Um, the same rules of decorum apply uh, than I mentioned before. So. Um, if you have any questions about those, please let us know. I'm going to turn the time to, uh, again, uh, Jennifer Bruno for a brief uh, introduction on this item. Uh, Jennifer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This next hearing pertains to the fiscal year 24 budget of the redevelopment agency as proposed by the mayor. If there are comments about the proposed city or library budgets, those comments should be presented to the council in the item later tonight. The RDA budget was discussed in a work session earlier today, and recordings and a staff report of the budget can be found on the council's budget website, tinyurl.com forward slash SLCFY24. Like the other budget public hearings, an additional public hearing on the RDA budget will be held on June 6th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Taylor, uh, now to begin with public comment on this item. Mr. Chair, we do not have anyone registered for this item. Anybody here that we miss in person that wants to comment on this item on the RDA budget? Okay, it seems like there is none, so I'm going to look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the board close the public hearing and refer to the public hearing on June 6, 2023. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Dugan, um, by Board Member Dugan and uh, a second by board member uh, Petro. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? I see none, Let's, let me call the question. All of those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed? So this motion passes unanimously six to zero. Um, now we are going to adjourn the RDA uh, meeting. Uh, the, uh, I will ask for a motion to, to do that. Mr. Chair, I move that we adjourn the RDA meeting and convene as the Salt Lake City Council. Second. I have a motion by Council Member, Board Member Wharton, and a uh, board member, uh, second by Board Member Dugan. Uh, is uh, all of those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion, that motion passes. Now we're convened as the Salt Lake City Council. Uh, bear with us. Uh, this is the, the, you know, the, the formal process to go through this. Uh, this. Um, now we're in item F1, if you want to follow. Um, and this is the, the council will approve the formal meet, meeting minutes for February 21, 2023. I look for a motion. Move, Move for approval. Second. I have a motion by uh, Council Member Wharton and a second by Council Member Mano. Um, is there any discussion on this item? No. Seeing none, I, all of those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed? See none. This motion passes unanimously. Uh, our next item is F2. Uh, the council will consider adopting a joint re ceremonial resolution with Mayor Mendenhall celebrating June 2023 as Pride Month. I'm going to turn the time to Council Member Mano, who will read the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is a joint ceremonial, ceremonial resolution celebrating, celebra excuse me, celebrating June 2023 as Pride Month in Salt Lake City. Whereas the month of June is traditionally recognized as Pride Month in commemoration of the Stonewall Riots of 1969, a movement that sparked change and 
are wide and is widely considered to be among the most important events leading to the gay liberation movement and the modern fight for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, gender, and queer plus LGBTQ plus rights in the United States. And whereas some of the most inspiring moments in our history have emerged from various civil rights movements that have brought one group after another from the margins to the mainstream of American society. And whereas Pride Month celebrates and recognizes a community that includes people who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, two-spirit, pansexual, asexual, gender fluid, non-binary, intersex, as well as all allies, and whereas Salt Lake City acknowledges that the LGBTQ plus community, and in particular indigenous, black, and other queer people of color, have faced and continue to face systemic discrimination, including restricted rights, social stigma, challenges accessing health care, housing, and other essential social services, and startling rates of violence. And whereas Salt Lake City has a proud history of leading the state and many other cities across the nation in enacting policies and programs that stand against discrimination and promote equality, opportunity, and prosperity for all members of the LGBTQ plus community, regardless of their race, religion, gender identity, or sexual orientation, and whereas Pride Month will be an uplifting reminder of how much we have to celebrate and should prompt us to remain diligent and committed in our efforts to ensure full equality, inclusion, and empowerment for every member of the LGBTQ plus community. And whereas from June 1st through June 4th, the Utah Pride Center, a community space for all LGBTQ plus Utahns, will host Pride Week, a celebration of the LGBTQ plus community with events and festivities. Now, Therefore, be it resolved that the Salt Lake City Council and Mayor of Salt Lake City recognize June 2023 as Pride Month in Salt Lake City. Be it further resolved, Salt Lake City encourages and welcomes all residents and visitors to embrace Pride Month's message of equality and unity and to enjoy its celebrations this June in peace, safety, and love. I'll turn the time back over to Council Chair. Thank you, Councilman Romano. Uh, I'm looking for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we adopt the resolution. Second. I have a, a, a motion by Councilmember Warren and a second by uh, Councilmember Valdemoros. Uh, is there any discussion? I, I would like to just very briefly say that um, uh, this um, council is a majority minor, minority, uh, but it's also a majority queer council, um, and I'm honored to serve with all of you. Um, and I, um, not only the queer ones, but the allies in this in this uh, in this uh, uh, place, and serve with this administration. And uh, it, it really is uh, humbling uh, to be here representing. Uh, this city. So, anyways, um, I'm going to call the question. Uh, all of those in favor say aye. 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 And all of those opposed? So, this po motion passes unanimously. Um, I would like to welcome and recognize uh, that we have joining us from the Utah Pride Center Jonathan Folk, co CEO. Uh, and Tanya Hawkins, co-CEO of the, the Utah Pride Center. Will uh, either of you would like to uh, address the resolution? If not, you're welcome, you're welcome to say something. If not, with no pressure here. I'm sorry. If I could just have you come to this microphone. That one's not on. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to, to be here uh, tonight. And thank you, all of you and the mayor, for this dedication, especially at a time like now. We know what's going on across the country. And we're very proud of all that you are doing for our residents and those that are coming to Salt Lake City to celebrate. Thank you. <laughs> I, <just have, laughs> I want to say thank you to all the council members and to the mayor. Thank you. We hope to see Sorry. all of you June yes. 1st through the 4th. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, Pride Week uh, is coming up soon, and we're going to celebrate together. Let's do a photo. Yes. Scooch. 
Commission. So we'll look here at this one first. One, two, three. Okay, can do a few here. One, two, three. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Tanya, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Thank okay. You. Um, thank you. <clears throat> We're going now to uh, the item G, the public hearing. Uh, if if we'd like to. Uh, I would like to, if you would like to comment on the public hearings today, we are accepting comments in person and through, through Zoom. If you need to speak to, with our staff, please select Isaac Canedo uh, from the list of participants. Uh, if you need to, you can also raise your hand in Zoom to indicate that you need assistance. Uh, Taylor Hill from our staff will be calling those who wish to comment based on the order of that we receive the, the names. If you're on Zoom, Please unmute your mic when Taylor calls your name. Item G1 regarding the ordinance, early notification text amendments. Taylor, please, uh, oh, we're going to go to Nick to give us a short introduction uh, on this item. Uh, thank you, Nick, Nick, policy analyst. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. This proposal would change various sections of the Salt Lake City Code relating to the early notification of public and recognized community organizations pertaining to land use projects. The petition is, would move all the planning and zoning related issues out of 2.60, the recognized community organizations, and put them in 21A zoning. That's it. Thank you, Nick, for that. Um, uh, Taylor, uh, can we please start with any of the public comment commenters? Mr. Chair, we do not have anyone registered for this item. Anybody here in the audience that wants to comment on this item? Okay. Seems that we have not missed anybody. I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearing and defer action to future council meeting. Second. There is a motion by council member Mano and a second by council member Dugan. Is there any, is, there is, is there any discussion on this item? That was to close the public hearing close and the public defer hearing action. and defer. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, I said it too fast. Okay. The motion is to close the public hearing and defer action. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Correct. Um, so there is no discussion. I will call the question. All of those uh, in support, please say aye. 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 Okay. This motion passes unanimously. This motion passes unanimously. Um, our next public hearing are grant applications, eating, uh, item G2 to G10. Uh, then uh, we'll hear uh, the public hearing after the short introduction. Uh, we'll, be take, we'll be taking uh, comments after the short introduction. I'm going to turn the time to Sylvia Richards, Council Staff Policy Analyst, to give us that short introduction. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The city pe periodically applies for and receives grants which fund some city programs. Each grant receives a public hearing which gives the opportunity, the public an opportunity to learn about those grants. Today there are nine. First is the Salt Lake Summit and Tooele County's Transportation Alternatives Program Grant Fiscal Year 2023, which would construct the nine-line trail extension west of Redwood Road and improve three pedestrian bicycle crossings. And second is the Utah Outdoor Recreation Grant, which will use funds to develop vacant space near Backman Elementary School to provide a safe safer route for children walking to school. The new space will become a gathering place with a nature playground and an outdoor classroom. 
Third is another Utah Outdoor Recreation Grant, which will fund the removal of fallen trees and debris from the Jordan River so that we'll be, it will become more accessible for boaters. Fourth is the Water Service Inventory Lead Service Replacement Plan Development Grant, which would fund a water service line inventory and create a lead service line replacement plan for nearly 14,000 water line connections in qualifying disadvantaged census blocks. Fifth is the Fire Prevention and Safety Grant Program, which will fund the purchase of pole-mounted cameras to conduct surveillance in areas of the city experiencing a high incidence of suspected intentionally set fires. Sixth is the Emergency Management Performance Grant. Funds will support the emergency management functions and programs. Seventh is the Police Traffic Services Equipment Grant, which will fund the purchase of radar units. Eighth is the Distracted Driving Prevention Program, which will fund distracted driving enforcement education overtime shifts. And ninth is the Race, Equity, and Leadership Grant, which will fund a study to identify city practices, policies, and procedures which present barriers to entrepreneurship. The consultant will work with city stakeholders to create solutions for more equitable city processes for minority-owned and small businesses. As a reminder, these are all items for which the city has applied to fund programs and projects. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sylvia, for, for that. Taylor, uh, please start with the first public comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have one person registered for this item. That will be Gail Dawes, who is here in person. Um, my name is Gail Dawes. I'm the school community council ch vice chair at Backman Elementary. I have grandchildren that graduated from Backman. There's an Elper. My great grandson started as seventh grader at West High. Now he's an eighth grader at West High. And Backman have really has really laid the groundwork for my family. My granddaughter was homeless. She moved here from Chan um, Chandler, Arizona. And I'm so grateful for the community that just wrapped their love around this family. Khalil is autistic. He's a fifth grader now. He wants to work for Verizon. And then we have little um, Tristan, who's uh, kindergarten. He'll be going full kindergarten this year. It's just so encouraging to see how our community is growing and coming together. This initiative, this plan would really help us, because I'm a country girl. I moved from the uh, reservation to here where we had mountains and streams and hills and sheep and cows and horses. And my grandchildren have fences and roads and crosswalks. So a little space like this would be such a healing element to their spirit and their soul and their min, uh, mindset. So I'd really appreciate it if um, these funds were allocated for this power place, place of power and healing, not just for now, but for the, the future as well. Yeah. Thank you, Gail. Any other uh, comment in person that we have missed on item uh, G2 to G10? Okay. It seems like we have, uh, I need a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearing and refer items G2 through G10 to a future consent agenda for action. Second. I uh, have a motion by council member uh, Dugan. Dugan. <laughs> I'm having a stroke right now. <laughs> and uh, a second by uh, Councilmember Wharton. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? All of those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So this motion passes uh, unanimously. Our last public hearing includes item G11 through G22. Uh, all ordinances that are associated with the implementation of the mayor recommended budget for Salt Lake City, including the library fund for fiscal year 2023-2024. This is our first out of the two budget public hearings with a second opportunity schedule Tuesday, June 6. I will like to uh, remind everybody online and in person that there is a link 
to the budget, uh, so you can read the budget if you are interested in, and it's teenyurl.com forward slash slcfy24, teenyurl.com forward slash slcfy24. Um, I, uh, before we begin taking comments, I will turn the time to Jennifer Bruno, uh, to staff policy analyst, to give us an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The council considers all ordinances relating to the fiscal year budget in one public hearing, as they are all needed together to implement the total mayor's proposed fiscal year 24 budget, including the library. The various ordinances address fees, compensation, setting property tax rates and budgets, among other items. Tonight's public hearing addresses ordinances G11 through G22, as you mentioned. For those that may not be aware, departments are discussed in detail at each of the council's public work sessions through May and June, which typically start between 1 and 2 p.m., and those are public. Recordings of those discussions are available online at the council's website as our staff analysis of each department. Uh, more information, as you mentioned, can be found at tinyurl.com forward slash slcfy24. An additional public hearing on the city's annual budget and these related ordinances will be held on June 6th at 7 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jennifer. Taylor, can we please start with our first comment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are two people here to speak to this item. The first will be Abdirzik Ibrahim, followed by Alan Sanderson. Abdirzik is here in person. Thank you. Again, my, uh, you know, my name is Abdelazak Ibrahim. I just came here to Utah as, uh, when I was uh, 18 years old as a refugee. I live most on West Side, but I really, I really care people living on West Side. So whenever the city has a budget, they should involve me you know, on the West Side because people, we're getting like multiple calls every day. Even today, they kicked people, like three people, without reason. They, so there's so many issues going on. Even we had a uh, small business, people having issues even the truck, we have a lot of people, refugees background, immigrants, they're driving trucks, uh, even they cannot do the load, now they're trying to park in their car, and they, they cannot afford the assurance, they cannot afford the, their uh, expenses, and now, so there's a lot of things happening on the west side, please, if there's any budget involving the city, they should move to the west side, because west side, they really need more help than other cities, as far as I know, because I've been involving so many things most of my life, I've been involved in the communities, so many things I've been seeing, a lot of things have been happening on West Side. Please, let's focus on West Side this time. You know, if the city has enough budget, they should do the most of the budget on West Side because a lot of things have been happening, really. We have a more crisis housing, even we don't have enough housing. We've been working last 10 years, I've been involving you know, so many things at the city, but still nothing happened. So let's do that, please. Let's focus on West Side whenever we have funding. That's what I want to say. Thank you. Next will be Alan Sanderson, who is here in person. Good evening. My name is Alan Sanderson. I'm a longtime resident of Salt Lake City. Um, I want to address the water budget. In, um, <clears throat> I'm not opposed to the, the water budget increases as they're written, especially the second two tiers, the highest rates. Um, I'm actually all in favor of those rates being increased. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't note the following. The city needs to remove the assessment of water from property taxes. Those of us who conserve water, who've xeriscaped our lawns, we're basically subs subsidizing those who have not. Um, I know there's a lot of budget reasons why the city prefers this, but I think at this point, the city needs to take a very hard look at water assessment and moving all of those costs into the base rate and the usage rates. At the same time, ordinances are really needed for outdoor watering. Um, in my neighborhood already, people started watering in April. That's ridiculous. Um, I haven't even turned on my water yet um, at this point. Um, I think the authority for determining when water gets turned on for outside should lie with the director of public uh, utilities. Um, they should be able to say in the springtime, water can be turned on on this date, and on this date in the fall, all water out, outdoor watering should be turned off. At the same time, we need to have ordinances that say there's no watering between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. Watering in the middle of the day still occurs. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous to see that happening. 
I know one of the hard parts with this is ordinances with enforcement and fines. How is that all going to work? But I think it's time that the city takes the lead in doing this because the gentle persuasion we hear this year in, year out, and it's just not working. So the rates are fine with me, but there's got to be some ordinances that need to start going along with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else who wishes to comment on these items? Mr. Okay. Chair, we had a few more people register. Perfect. Um, next, we'll have Allison Jones, followed by Sarah Bushman, and then Chris Robstock. Allison is here in person. Hi, I'm Allison Jones. I'm a county resident, and I'm going to agree with everything that the fine gentleman before me just said um, regarding the water rates that are um, proposed to be raised by the Department of uh, Public Utilities in the upcoming budget. I have two words to say, and that is about time. We, as Utahns, use more water than almost any other state. You know all this. It's like 240 gallons per capita per day, dwarfing cities like Las Vegas and LA and Denver. And so raising the rates is a great first step, but it needs to be tiered to water usage. It needs to be disintegrated from the property taxes. Like you said, we need more ordinances on when you can start watering, when you need to stop. So raising the rates has been needing to happen for a long time. Glad to see it's happening, but it's just the, the beginning of what needs to be done to um, make our citizens conserve water in the time of drought and the need to save the Great Salt Lake. So thank you. Thank you, um, Mayor Mendenhall, and thank you, Department of Public Utilities, and thank you for passing this budget. And next will be Sarah Bushman, followed by Chris Robstock, and then Duke Henninger. Sarah is here in person. Uh, I'm noticing a great deal of homeless and um, low-income people. There are far, far more needs than there are availability to house people. The, in just searching, trying to help people and get in, into some place, the vouchers are, are closed for three years. Um, the apartments have lists that are two to three years out, and people need place now. Is there a way for the city to apply to the state or funding, or is there how, what can we do as a city to enable the, the, these individuals to become self-reliant? Um, just putting them into shelters when things are desperate doesn't solve the problem. And that's what my concern is, as to how to do this. Thank you. Next will be Chris Robstock, followed by Duke Henninger. Chris is here in person. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council, Mayor. My name is Chris Repstock. I'm in District 2, Mr. Pui, uh, 864 West, 200 South. Uh, the issue of this evening is about street issues. I recognize that Everybody has a project that they want tax dollars to be spent on. I'm a transplant from New Orleans since 1995. I've lived in the avenues, below the avenues, in the city. And never before have I seen the atrociousness of the city streets as I do today. Potholes, cracks everywhere. In the year of 2012, from April through November. I used to work for Salt Lake City Corporation, specifically Salt Lake City Street Maintenance Division, asphalt crew. I used to do tie-ins, potholes, crack seal, filling in the cracks with tar, snow plow. So I know personally firsthand about street repair. 
Whatever excuse there is, street repair and total repavement has been neglected for years, and this is ridiculous. I get it. Everybody's got a project that they want. Taxpayer dollars have to be spent. I don't mind paying taxes. I just don't want our elected public servants squandering our tax dollars. But if we want to attract tourists, if we want to keep our hometown people happy, let's have safe, smooth, clean streets. Please. I'm a supporter of you, Mayor. I'm a supporter of, of the previous mayor, Rocky Anderson. Hi. Both, both have your strengths. But let's please, let's focus on getting these streets repaired, paved new. Thank, Thank you. you. And next will be Duke Henninger. Duke, you may now unmute. All right, thank you. Um, I am a resident that's been here for about 20 years since going to the University of Utah. I currently live on an area of Salt Lake City that is somewhat forgotten. We're right on the cusp over by Brickyard on 10th East, about, about 3100 South. And we're in a little spot that has no sidewalks. And in my attempts to figure out how we could work with the city to get sidewalks, we were kind of stonewalled finding out from the city planner that this just simply isn't in the plan. You'll have to go talk to your city representative. So that's what leads me here today. Um, I noticed within the water bill that we get that there is a portion for um, curb and gutter. That's approximately $7 per month for what we spend. I realize the simplicity of being able to allocate these the budgets, you know, straight line across, uh, across the city. And I'm okay with this. But it would be something that would make me feel better if I pay for something that I have. And so I'd like to just add this comment here and to help understand what is it that I can do to work with the city to be able to get, to get a sidewalk in for the 12 homes in this little forgotten area of a, of a misconstrued area of the, of the city where we are city, across the street is county, down the street is county, and it's, uh, it just seems like uh, we're on a through street. There's about 15 kids that live on this little street within this city side. And, uh, and, and people go kind of quick through here. Thank you. T Taylor? That was the final registered commenter. Thank you for all of those that share their comment uh, today. I'm uh, looking for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearings for items G12 to G23 and refer to the public hearings on June 6, 2023. I'll second, but no, the, I think the motion sheet's wrong. It's G22 through 22. 22. 11 G through 22. G22. Okay, the motion is uh, to uh, close the public hearing and refer action to a future agenda from item 11 to 22. Is okay. that correct? Yes. 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 Okay. All of, uh, any, any discussion on this item? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Any oppose? This motion passes unanimously. We're moving on item H, potential action items. Uh, H1, which is an ordinance, budget amendment number six for fiscal year 2022-2023. I'm looking for a motion. Okay, Mr. Chair, I move that the council adopt an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2023 final budget of Salt Lake City, including the employment, employee sta employment staffing document, only for items shown on the motion sheet. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Council Member Mano and a second by Council Member Dugan. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Any oppose? This motion carries unanimously. We're moving along with uh, to item H2 regarding a resolution for the issuance of airport revenue bonds series 2023 for financing the construction of the new Salt Lake City Airport. I'm looking for a motion. I move the council adopt the bond parameter resolution and recognize the date is set for a public hearing on the bond issuance for June 6, 2023. 
I have, second. I have a motion by uh, Council Member uh, Petro and a second by Council Member Dugan. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? Okay, all of those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, this motion carries unanimously. Um, now we're going to uh, questions for the mayor. Mayor, thank you again for being here. Uh, I, uh, do we have any, I think we don't have any uh, questions to, to the mayor, anybody? No, we're good? Um, and now we're going to move to I-2, which is comments to the City Council. Uh, this is the general comment section of the agenda. Uh, those that are joining us on Zoom, uh, Isaac Canedo from our staff will moderate our Zoom and will message you with any questions about your registration. The staff is handling a multitude of, of, of tasks. Please limit your messages to technical issues and minimal information updates. If you need to speak with our staff, please select Isaac Canedo from the list of participants. If you need to, if you need to uh, contact the host, please raise your hand in Zoom to indicate that you need uh, assistance. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, there is a two-minute two time, time al al allowed for, allowed for, for comments. If your comment is longer than that, you can email us the comments to council.comments at slcgov.com. Uh, Taylor Hill and our staff will be calling those who wish to comment based on the order of registration or how we receive the cards. If you are on Zoom, please unmute your, your mic when Taylor calls your name. Uh, the two minute mark, at uh, the two minute mark, the host will announce time and your microphone will, me, will be muted after that. If you're unable to finish your comment, send it by email as mentioned. I, th I guess I jumped a little ahead on my, uh, on my uh, comments. Uh, the rules of the quorum apply here too. The council respects all points of views and welcome new insights, uh, but please be respectful while sharing your comments. Avoid yelling, using profanity, racial slurs, obscene or defamatory remarks. If you violate this rule, we'll mute you and you will forfeit your chance to address the council tonight. If you feel that you need to use such language to express your opinion, you can email the council members directly or call our 24 comment uh, phone line. Additionally, our staff will request your name during the, web, uh, during the Zoom registration uh, process. To limit disruption, your name cannot include a message or violate our rules of the quorum. If your name doesn't comply, our staff will let you know. Uh, for those joining through uh, Zoom, please watch your chat window in case we try to reach you. Taylor, can we begin with uh, public comments? Mr. Chair, there are three people registered for this item. The first will be Robert Comstock, followed by Michael Frazier, and then Maisie. Robert is here in person. Robert Comstock, 1980 South Richard Street, Salt Lake City, Utah. I've lived there for 25 years with my wife, and we raised our children there. Um, what happened to OC Tanner over the last 20 years tore down seven to eight good houses from Hartwell to 21st South, then paved the entire city block, and now the unsheltered are constantly breaking down the wooden wall that separates them from the alley behind the, the east side of Richard Street. The unsheltered are breaking into our backyards. I've been in here about four to six times, Councilman Mono, to tell you about this. I've asked you to meet with me. I'm going to ask you again politely, please, sir, come and meet with me and walk, and I'm going to show you the street. We had to build, we have to build, we had to put up security lights on our street. We have to build fences to keep the unsheltered out of our backyards. OC Tanner needs to build a masonry wall to keep the unsheltered from constantly tearing down that wooden wall. That's a blight. The entire street is blighted. That city block. We take pride in our homes. We are central city residents. I'm going to ask you again, please come to my home and make an appointment with me to look on Richard Street what is happening. Number two, we need traffic calming off of 21st South. It's a dead end street. There needs to either be there are 20 to 25 young children and grandchildren on that street, just a block and a half long. 
They come off 21st South, they're angry, they whip around and go out of our street at 45 to 50 miles an hour. We need traffic calming on that street. Please bring your attention to your district, Councilman Mano, and come and meet with me. Would that be possible? That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we will hear from Michael Frazier, followed by Maisie. Michael is here in person. Hello, everybody. Um, Thank you for uh, being here and um, all that you do in that. Uh, my name is Michael Frazier. I'm originally from California. Um, I originally came to Salt Lake in 2010. Uh, so it's been about 13 years now. Um, I'm here to try to um, work on my situation. You know, um, I'm also known by nicknames. I'm also known, some people call me Elijah. Some people call me Amir. Um, but um, I've, I've, I came out here to Salt Lake with a certain amount of celebrity status, and uh, it's getting like out of control. It's starting to snowball, and, and uh, we're getting, well, I've, I've been receiving threats from the, from the church, from the LDS faith almost every day now. I had to make a police report and that, and uh, so this is my second um, city council meeting that I'm at, and um, I'm the only one here trying to work on my situation and stop um, what's happening. I don't know if you guys are aware of what's happening. There's been threats towards the church, not just the LDS, but all churches. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, that's not what uh, I would think the Lord would want. So, um, again, my name's Michael Frazier. I'm in District 7 out in Sugar House. I'm at the Schoolhouse Apartments. Um, I left my phone number, my email, all that, that stuff, and um, Again, I just want to thank you in advance, and, and God bless you guys. Thank you. And next is Maisie, who is here in person. I, is, is this, who, who was the name again? Sorry, Taylor. What was the name again? Maisie. Maisie, are you here? I, while we look for Macy, uh, if she wants to share a comment, I would like to. I would like to rem remind everybody. Okay, she's here. I would like to remind everybody that uh, com public comment uh, it is not a back and forth uh, because you know it makes it awkward for us. Um, but, but please uh, feel free to continue with your public comment. Thank you, Macy. Hi. Um, so one of one of my issues is. is um, affordable housing and the poor. Um, I live in an apartment and I'm not homeless, but um, I'm not rich either on white trash. <laughs> but I look out my window and I see the homeless people and um, they, they shouldn't be ashamed that they're homeless. We should be ashamed that they're, that they're homeless. I don't, I receive food stamps, but yet I help them with food because I can't buy food and eat and know that they're out there hungry. Um, Mayor Mendehall wanted to do the tiny houses for the homeless. Why didn't anybody, any businesses, nobody wanted to do anything? I would volunteer at any time to help build tiny houses myself for the homeless if somebody would, um, businesses would help. Why aren't we trying to advocate for businesses to help uh, Mayor Mendes Hall's um, tiny houses for the homeless? I remember on the news I heard a man that's supposed to be this rich man blaming the homeless for their situation, that they caused it themselves. No circumstances, you can lose your job, you, this and that um, happens. Nobody says, I'm going to be homeless tomorrow. And um, they, that's the kind of life they want to live. Um, Governor Cox said there's a big surplus of COVID money, and he doesn't want to spend it right away. Gosh, if there's a surplus of COVID money, help Mayor Mendehall get the tiny houses for the homeless. Why can't we use that for the homeless? It's COVID money. It's not to be hung on with. 
And so that's that's my big, that's that's my big issue is we we have to help the homeless. Can you imagine waking up every day, and you turn around Thank and you're you, like. Thank you, Macy. Thank you. You're two, min two minutes. I, no, no, no. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. That was the final registered commenter. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for, for sharing your comments. If you really, if you have more comments to share with us, uh, please, you can talk to us or talk to some of the staff members here to receive that comment or emailing us, council.comments at slcgov.com uh, or calling our council line. Um, I, we have no new business, and we're moving on the agenda uh, to item K1, uh, which is unfinished business. Uh, and K1 is an ordinance regarding economic development revolving loan fund for Truckland LLC. I'm looking for a motion. Sure. Mr. Chair, I move that the council adopt the ordinance approving a $350,000 loan for Truckland LLC from the Economic Development Loan Fund. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Dugan and a second by Councilmember Petro. Is there any discussion on this item? I see none. I'm going to call the question. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? This motion carries unanimously. I'm going to be moving to item L, consent agenda. Uh, I'm looking for a motion. Mm Mr. Chair, move we approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda by Councilmember Warren and a second by Councilmember Dugan. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? This motion carries unanimously. Uh, this concludes the Salt Lake City Council meeting um, for, for now, and the Council formal meeting uh, is now st stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody.